Lately I was listening to a podcast called Mathematical Objects and they had Matthew Squaggs on who was showing his game of Mephsteroids. It's the old arcade classic Asteroids but we've added topology and map projections thrown in to make it confusing. I'll link to them both in the description and they're well worth checking out. But it got me thinking about a game I heard called Populous the Beginning. This came out in 1998 and it looked like this. So far. Every level was set on a unique planet and you could orbit the planet with your camera however you like. You could sneak up on the enemy sometimes by going the long way around the back of the planet if you had enough spells to create bridges. And, and I thought this looked incredible. Honestly, I still think it holds up. Okay, so it doesn't push many polygons, but the polygons it does have are all in the landscape and huts and trees and obelisks, which you kind of expect to look a bit chunky, so it gets away with it in a way that I think other games of the era did not. But setting a game on a sphere with spherical gravity is computationally and programmatically quite difficult, whereas setting a game on a flat surface is very easy, so that is what they did. The maps are actually two-dimensional squares rather than spheres, and they're simply drawn on a sphere so that you can feel like you're orbiting huge planets when you play it. And if you look at the minimap up in the corner, you can see that as objects drift off one side of the map, they come on the other, and similarly, if they drift off the top, they come on the bottom, which is exactly the same wraparound space system as Asteroids used. Asteroids wasn't trying to evoke the feeling of playing on a sphere so much as just playing in a large unbounded area in space, but the effect is the same, the levels are finite, but unbounded. Which is to say that they're not infinitely large, but you can't hit the edge. And this wrapping around feels fairly spherical. If you have a sphere and you spin it round, then objects will go off one side, loop round the back and come on the other, and they'll go off the top, loop round the back and come on the bottom. But this isn't quite how Populous or Asteroids levels work. They don't have a back to them. If you fly off one side, you immediately appear at the other, so if we stick both sides together, you get a cylinder, which is starting to look a bit more spherical. Things are going quite well so far. But if you fly off the top of the level, you immediately come back on the bottom. So if we stick both two sides together as well, then you get this shape, which mathematicians call obviously not a sphere. And they can prove it's not a sphere. And to do that, they use <laughs> the hairy ball theorem. Look, I didn't name it, okay? According to the Behari Ball Theorem, if this shape, this torus, were covered in fur, you could comb all of that fur so it lay flat. You could do that, for example, by combing it all clockwise. If you had a sphere covered in fur, you would either have to come out from a pole and in at another and it would have like a parting, or else you'd come round all the way and it would have like a cowlick at the top and bottom. And that is the official difference between a donut and a sphere according to maths. In gameplay terms, this means you could, if you wanted to, fill an entire planet with your followers and have them all stand facing the same direction, but you would never want to do that because it would be a ridiculous waste of mana and it would take a long time and be boring. If you've played this game, you might be thinking, OK, but I can zoom out and look at the entire planet at once and it's obviously a sphere, so how does that work? And the answer is that this is a two-dimensional map projected onto a sphere. If you get a grid of squares and project it onto a sphere, you get a sphere with all squares on it. And if you take a two-dimensional map and project it onto a sphere, you get a picture of a planet. And this is great unless you look at it from any other angle, in which case the illusion falls apart. But Populous lets you spin the planet round and look at the other side, right? So what's going on there? And the answer is that it doesn't let you do that at all, it just lets you think you're doing that. If you start with a grid of squares that's moving and rotating, and you project that onto a sphere, it looks like the sphere is rotating. It isn't rotating, but your visual systems aren't designed to pick up on moving objects projected onto stationary objects. They're designed to spot three-dimensional objects such as you might encounter in real life and track them as they rotate. So just like you see human figures in shadows and faces in the moon, you see a rotating object. And you can kind of see the illusion with a grid of squares, but if you put a map on it, it looks extremely convincing. Again, unless you look at it from any other angle, in which case the whole thing falls apart. And Populous is far from being the only game which uses these kind of toroidal levels, but the only other one I'm aware of that draws them onto a sphere for you is 1997's Tetrisphere 
which is starting to look like a bad name because what you're doing is playing a game which visually resembles but has nothing to do with Tetris on a shape which visually resembles but has nothing to do with the sphere. If Populous were made today, it might well use a genuine sphere. Modern games do it, and while you end up with a weird grid system with the occasional pentagon in it, you could mask that by using a black and white style gridless analogue building placement system. Would it be a better game if it did? Probably a little, but not much. I think the only time that this weird geometry ever tripped me up when I was playing the game was sometimes if you orbit the planet at a long angle, you won't end up back where you started. You'll visit the entire rest of the planet over quite a long time before you get back to where you were and it's quite easy to get lost. And spherical navigation is no easier really. None of us have an instinct for how to do it. Granted we live on a sphere, but it's such a large sphere compared to the distances that we can realistically travel that it might as well be just flat. Even if you do plot travel that spans thousands and thousands of miles, you never really go via the poles, so the Earth might as well be a cylinder. And you can approximate a cylinder as easily on a torus as you can on a sphere. Honestly, I think if the game were set on a sphere, it would be annoying for players that they could rotate the camera accidentally just by moving it. And at the risk of enraging Matt Parker's subscribers, at the end of the day, it's more important players have a good time from the geometry be accurate. TLDR, Populous the Beginning, is a superb game, but to be clear, it is a superb game about conquering a series of ridiculous donut-shaped planets which you absolutely should play, but you absolutely should not think too hard about.